talking flu numbers with Amanda Shoemate. She's an epidemiologist with the Oklahoma State Department of Health. So we're talking about the flu here in Oklahoma. Where are you seeing it regionally here in the state? Which which areas of the state are seeing the most cases? Yeah, so as far as like the flu intensity um, on a scale of one to 10, we're at about a, about a four right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as geographic spread, we're at local, which just means that we just have a couple of regions that are seeing increased influenza-like illness activity. Uh, what regions are those? Um, I believe um, kind of in the Northeast region, um, which we typically kind of see that um, every year. Okay. So. Um, when it comes to the rest of the country, what are we seeing in terms of numbers? What are we seeing in terms of spread? Um, so in terms of spread, um, as far as the influenza-like illness, um, it's kind of at the baseline nationally. Um, so it's encouraging um, that we might continue to see kind of more of a mild season. So definitely, you know, nothing like last year. Okay. Um, any correlation between the flu and allergies? It feels like allergies are crazy right now, or they were, you know, towards the end of the year. Yeah. Any correlation between those two? Yeah, and un unfortunately, there's not really necessarily correlation. Um, now is just the time that we're seeing, you know, a lot of you know, fall allergies. You're also seeing a lot of other respiratory viruses circulate, mm -hmm. um, you know, like common cold, um, RSV. You know, there's just so much right now in the winter, which is kind of typical every winter um, to see a lot of things circulating. So, you know, really the best thing is to, you know, practice that good hand hygiene because um, that's going to take care of a lot of stuff. You know, you're going to prevent a lot of illnesses just practicing that yeah. diligent hygiene. <laughs> we were talking about that. This is not going to the sink and washing your hands for exactly. five seconds and walking away. Talk about that. What are some of the best practices when it comes to preventing the spread of the flu? Yeah, so when you wash your hands, you really do want to do the due diligence and take the time to wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds, you know, with soap and warm water. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to make sure to get all of those areas on your hands um, and then, you know, towel off appropriately, um, you know, use that towel to open the bathroom door so you don't, you know, reintroduce more germs onto your hands that you just got rid of. Right. Um, and then when you don't have soap and water available, um, using those alcohol-based um, hand sanitizers is a good Good, uh, backup option for you. Also things like covering your mouth, I'm guessing with your, yes, with your sleeve. Yes, you know, practicing respiratory etiquette, you know, cover your cough if you are sick. Um, ultimately stay home if you are sick. Um, you know, if you're not feeling well, because um, you don't want to spread things to others. And with flu, you know, you can actually start spreading the flu and be infectious before you even start showing signs or symptoms. So, you know, if you're not feeling well, it's best to just stay home. What are some common misconceptions when it comes to the flu or the flu shot? in general? What are some things that people think that are completely wrong? Um, a lot of people think um, that flu vaccine is, is, to, is similar to other vaccines that do a pretty good job, like the measles vaccine, it does a pretty good job, you know, almost 100%, um, you know, reducing um, your uh, chance of getting sick right. um, from it. Um, but the flu vaccine, because the flu, just the nature of the flu virus, it changes so quickly from season to season. Um, the flu vaccine is not necessarily going to protect you 100%. So a lot of people have that misconception of, well, I'm not going to get the flu shot because I can still get the flu. Um, but the, really the public health impact of the flu vaccine is it does a really great job of reducing the duration of illness. So you're going to be out, you know, fewer sick days. And it also reduces the um, severity of illness. So you may not have to, you know, be hospitalized for the flu. So you can still get the flu even if you get the flu shot, but Correct. as you said, decreases that severity, doesn't last as long. Exactly. Yeah, on average, um, it's about 40 to 60 percent effective each year. Um, those numbers kind of vary year to year. Um, but like I said, it does, it does a very good job of preventing, uh, you know, reducing your severity and reducing your duration of illness. A anything else before we wrap up here, a few more seconds, anything else you want the public to know about the flu? Um, it, like I said, it's never too late to get your flu shot. You know, there's still many more weeks of flu activity to come. And so if you haven't gotten your flu shot, get it. Okay. <laughs> that is very good advice, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you guys stay healthy out there. Get that flu shot. It's effective. Very effective.